Hello all, this is Dr. Dheeraj Masapu. I'm a senior consultant in the field of neuroanesthesiology and we have Dr. Nitin Manohar. Most of my subscribers already know him, but for the people who are watching this video for the first time, he is Dr. Nitin and we both have done DM in uh, Nimans in 2013. And after that, uh, he is at present a consultant in Cleveland Clinic, Abu Dhabi. Welcome to the channel, Dr. Nitin. Hi, Dheeraj. Nice to be back. I'm, I think you're most uh, frequent <laughs> flyer. <laughs> <laughs> so always yes, I know you don't have to introduce you now. So the video uh, agenda is about the uh, European uh, Diploma in uh, Anesthesia and Intensive Care. It's called as EDAC. So Nitin has recently passed EDAC. Congratulations, Nitin. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll, uh, first, my question is, uh, see, so you're already a consultant in uh, in uh, Clinic Abu Dhabi. And at uh, this part of your career, and uh, so why did you actually write this examination? <laughs> <laughs> Very good question. It took me my it took my uh, uh, me myself to answer this question. It took me around two years to understand if I should do it or not. Because everybody around me here had probably done it or are probably doing it. So uh, this was something I was also trying to answer myself. So the answer that uh, I got in this uh, for this question was first thing is it gives you an opening. So idiac basically means. It's an European Diploma of Anesthesia and Intensive Care. I'll just explain. This is the exam conducted by ASIAC, so European Society of Anesthesia and Intensive Care. So ASIAC has this uh, uh, exam. This exam is conducted, uh, the, the theory is conducted once a year, okay? And uh, this theory will be an MCQ exam. Uh, this MCQ is not like single best answer. It is like MTF, multiple true false answer. Oh. So this uh, this uh, this ex uh, this MTF exam is actually really tough. It's not very easy. And once you pass this, then you have to give your viva. That will come in the next year again. You have to again apply after the result. And so it will take about a two years process to complete your ADIAC. So why I did ADIAC? The simple answer I would say is one is to give me access to Europe and to UK. So with ADIAC, you get direct GMC registration. Okay. So you get a re registration number from GMC, you can register and you can directly apply for jobs. Okay. So not that I'm going to go to the UK now, I don't have any such plans, but to keep my options open. Since I'm working in the Middle East, I'm working in UAE now, and I don't know how the future will be, like 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line. Maybe my children will go to UK to study. I see that with many of my colleagues. So their children go to UK frequently to do their university education. So then maybe I just want to keep an op option open. Uh, so for that, IRIAC is useful. Uh, it will give opening uh, to the UK market to work. Mind you, to go to the full pathway or to do the rest of the things, IRIAC is just a stepping stone. After that, there are many steps that you need to do. That uh, you have to start with IRIAC to get into uh, UK. So this is and second thing I realized was uh, one more thing was I needed some, you know, after 14, 13 years of doing MD and uh, my anesthesia, and I was mainly doing neuroanesthesia in India for seven years, uh, my three years of DM, four years, four, four and a half years of practicing as neuroanesthetist. My general anesthesia knowledge and skills were uh, not very, you know, because when you come to other countries, you have to, like in my previous videos I had explained, you have to do everything. And you can be specialized in one area. So my general anesthesia knowledge or thing, I realized I had to, you know, maybe catch up a bit. So this EDIAC would give me that uh, opportunity to again go back to my basics, again recertify. So that was one thing. Uh, we teach anesthesia residents here in uh, my hospital. So to teach them also, you know, you need to be really good with your basics. And EDIAC will test you very, very there. It's a very high standard exam. It's not an easy exam. So if you think you can just write the exam and pass 100%, it will not happen. You have to put a lot of preparation on this. So it's a very challenging exam. Mainly the basics part is very challenging for people like us who are already doing clinical work. So uh, that is the challenge. So for, MD yeah, that was the for example, MD with three years experience, that is eligible to, you know, to come to Dubai and Abu Dhabi. So for them, yeah. is there any advantages there or not? Again, that is the advantages it will show on your CV, definitely. See, if you are an EDI qualified person, it says that you have attained the European standards. 
Okay. And to attain EDX standards, it is difficult. Everybody knows that it is not like an easy exam, or it's not like your MD exam where you know you have worked in the hospital. People will stand by you. Your lecturers or teachers will support you, and they know you already worked the, under them and how good you are or what you are, and they would have already decided whether they want to pass you or fail you or something like that. So EDX is not like that. It is a very very challenging exam. In the Viva, there are four tables. and eight examiners you have to face and each one my exam was in uh, uh, poland it was in a uh, in a city called warsaw first of all traveling to that city and then facing eight examiners each of them were from different parts of europe oh. so you know their clinical work their uh, level of uh, working or how they work and what they expect you have to meet all of them so it's uh, it's 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 challenging and you You know, you get really challenged in the Viva, so it was not easy. It was difficult. Now I want to dissect uh, in a part by part. For part one, if we go into, so how many yeah. questions will be there, and what is the fees, and how? Yeah. So part one, yeah. So part one, I think uh, the applications open in somewhere around Feb or March. I exactly do not know the date. If you just go to the website, they will tell you when the exam dates will open. But it gets filled like this immediately. The slots will get. So it's a limited. So in India also, yeah. In India also, there are slots centers. But Indians will uh, many Indians will write this exam. So in India, the slots get filled very quickly, and then people have to travel outside to write. Even in the Middle East, like you say, Cleveland Clinic, we are a center for uh, in this uh, UAE for radiac exam. But our slots itself gets filled so fast that UAE people also have to travel out. So I wrote my exam in Muscat in Oman. In oh. the neighboring center, because I didn't get a center in my own hospital. In two minutes, the centers get filled. So that oh. is the first challenge to get the slot. There, you you can't believe uh, so many people are writing this exam mm. uh, from all across the world. So this is the challenge. Second thing is once you get the exam date, then you have to prepare. This is not at all an easy exam. The main first part challenge is there are two papers. Okay, mm. each of them is I think hundred questions with uh, four or five answers. Like each state, each question, there'll be like they'll give you a topic mm. like uh, sympathetic nervous system, and then there will be four statements. You have to say whether it is true or false. Each one, and they will test you nicely. The main focus of the exam is basics. Mm. So pharmacology, physiology, anatomy, physics. Mm. This will take away most of the. you know paper so it is very very challenging and it's not something which you can answer without reading if i would have given the exam without preparation i wouldn't have passed this exam i will definitely tell you that i put extensive preparation about 2 uh, 2 two, two and a half 3 months was my preparation time so part 1 for the part 1 how to prepare yeah, for the part 1 part 1 paper 1 is basics hmm. part Uh, part one, paper two is clinical. Even though they say clinical, ninety percent of the stuff will be basics in clinical. They will not ask you clinical stuff. What you do in your day to day practice? It will be core, in depth uh, knowledge um, in each. So they will ask you about physiology of a disease, and you know uh, physics, pharmacology, and uh, stuff. So you have to prepare uh, very well. There are uh, so many recommended books for this. Uh, mm, but each one has its has its own uh, way of uh, preparing. If you want me to mention the books, I can mention what yeah, I did. Mention. Yeah, for the first part, I did uh, Master Pass. This mm-hmm. is a standard book which everybody passes. It's it's uh, uses it's like notes of each topic. But mind you, if you do only Master Pass, you just read through the topic. It's mm-hmm. like notes for each uh, topic. Okay. But you cannot answer MT, MC, uh, MTF. This is multiple true false questions with this. You have to do some MTF. For that, there is a book called Thousand MTF. Okay. So to do this thousand MTF and master pass one and two once, it will take you about at least if you like every one of us will be working and with that you put in about one and a half two hours of study time per day. It will take you anywhere between one and a half to two months to finish this once. Okay. And you have to revise this before the exam and go. So at least two readings of this. Okay. It will take you about two two and a half months of preparation. With along with your work and last uh, few days before the exam, I took some leave like one week leave. And then try to revise all this basic. I did not study any clinical stuff. I just went to basics. And my clinical stuff, I, 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 I was thinking that I will be able to answer with my own clinical knowledge. If you read the basics and go well, you will most likely get through because that is where. And this exam is not like marks. It's like percentile. So you have to stand. Uh, there will be a cutoff mark based on what everyone has scored. Mm. So the cutoff mark for each paper will be somewhere around seventy percent. Okay. So seventy percent of the questions you have to get right. Mm-hmm. So that's the high score first of all. 
but uh, the thing is already there are only two options true or false so 50% already by you know by probability you will get right if you mark everything as true 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 maybe you will get 50% so you know you have to just cut that 70% so it will be an average score of what everyone has got and from there they will do the calculation so average cut off will be 70 to 73 generally every year so first part i passed uh, in my first attempt uh the basics was more difficult again i would like to stress to your viewers part 2 uh, clinical that is uh, i mean uh, part 2 of the uh, sorry paper 2 of the, part 1 fees fees uh, you have to pay for oh. so fees uh, i exactly don't know it was somewhere between 300 euros something like 300 to 350 euros okay. if you become a member the fees will get reduced hmm. so uh if your hospital is sponsoring your membership the in my hospital they they sponsor the membership so what i did was i became a member yeah so if you become no some educational institutions like somebody is a faculty in india and some um i, I think government hospital or uh, no, no deemed uh, hospital then even university then maybe they will sponsor so the key is if you become a member you will get a reduction in the uh, exam fees also so you can take that advantage but anywhere average is 300 euros something that is a fixed uh, thing 300 to 350 euros that will come up to uh, i don't know how much uh, 1200 uh, dirhams 1200 dirhams means uh, 25000 rupees something like that so that is your fees for your exam mm. and then you have to travel to the center and do that so you are lucky if you get it in india if you are writing in india then in your same place otherwise you have to take a flight come to another country Bah. so the fee is uh, take the slot as soon as the slot opens they will tell 4:30 the slots will open european time 4:30 to everything will be booked so in 2 minutes most of the indian centers are booked in 5 minutes most of the popular cities where flights are available are also booked finally if you book half an hour later you will be left with only europe you have to go to europe and register oh. which is not necessary you spend so much to go to europe get a visa it's very difficult so this is the first part yeah So, so getting a center itself is tough. I think uh, I'll apply to my. Yeah. That is better. <laughs> <laughs> no, very difficult. In India, I think uh, many people now are aware of this exam, and many uh, youngsters who are doing this uh, idea, uh, they apply from India to Indian centers. So, so if you ask me, who is the best candidate to do idea? I would say the fresh MD pass outs. Hmm. They are the best candidates. I think even before you pass your MD, also you can give the first part. yeah you can and to do the sec- yeah in for the second part you have to do, do your md and uh, show your md certificate mm. so the best chance is immediately after your md you are fresh in your knowledge just do this exam my suggestion to most of the viewers who are uh, watching this if you are doing your md or dnb just immediately do it yeah. it is not uh, important whether you will go to uk or not this degree will give you a lot of uh, value ad- value addition to your cv and later it becomes more difficult for me See, after 14 years of doing MD, going back to basics was such a challenge, you know. Though I uh, I enjoyed the process of reading through basics and going through all that, it was really difficult. So the more you age, the more difficult. So there are three kind of people who write this exam. One is the fresh graduates. So they are the best position to answer the basic questions. But what they will uh, lack is clinical experience. So in the viva, when you are getting asked clinical situations. you will be able to not very well answer because your experience is lagging mm. so people like us with uh, like 10 years experience for us reading is difficult doing clinical work and then getting your uh, reading hours and doing your basics uh, reading is difficult but when it comes to clinical questions so they ask me about echo they ask me about uh, ultrasound they ask me about uh, ct scan all this i was able to easily answer clinical questions Mm. so the basics was difficult so basics in the viva they were asking me about pharmacology you know in depth about physics about principles of uh, vaporizer and stuff like that so unless you read thoroughly you will not be able to answer and it's like they will ask you clear inside the things like what is the definition of saturated vapor pressure how do you define it uh, you know like key uh, questions inside uh, physics yeah. yeah so you need to really prepare it so these people who are in the middle career like 10 years uh, past md these people will have like uh, this advantage that clinical things but the, i have seen people who are doing it later also i have seen some colleagues doing it at the age of 55 60 oh. also they want to do it yeah. it becomes really difficult for them because then the confidence to read and then uh, you know as you age it becomes more difficult to read but uh, i have seen many people doing it also it's if you are motivated 
uh, I I had a colleague who was uh, 63 years old, and she did this at the age of 63, and it was it was it was such a motivation for us that you know at at, at the age of 63 if she can do it, then we also have to try to do it. So that was my motivation. Uh, uh, so it's not impossible, but you have to put the efforts. So that so is the thing. After writing part one, when do you get the result? Yeah. So after writing part one, then they will take one and a half months to give the result. The exam typically happens in September or mid September. Okay. By November first or something, they will release the result. You have to pass both papers. Okay. If you only pass one, no use. You have to pass both basics and clinical paper. Okay. So once you do the pass, then you are eligible for part two. Got it. So next the part next step is part two applications will open uh, by uh, December or something. Uh, they will start the no. Uh, they don't open the application. Basically, the they will give a date. Okay. When you can book your slot, so that date will come somewhere between Feb or something. I think I don't remember exactly Jan or Feb. And once they release the date, like I told you, immediately the slots will get full. So same. So what you have to do is you have to same problem again. So you have to you have to first think. Uh, in part two, one more thing is you can give online. Okay. Or you can do physically. Physically, the centers are all in Europe. Mm. Okay. Uh, online, you.